Hey guys, it's another Scrawler box. This one sounds like it has pencils. Let's find out what kind. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, first of all, uh, Duo Sticks Fruit Candy Thingamajig. Ooh, it's squishy. Squish. Squish. And our print, if I can get it out of the box. Ooh. I'm gonna guess we have watercolor pencils. That's just a guess. This art is from Joanna Fee, 21 years old, from Portugal. people online, inspirational artists, everyone create art and everyone can make it beautiful. Instagram. Paper. Oh wow. Very thick, very rough. Watercolor paper. Very nice. And there's two pieces. This is, this is nice watercolor paper. Look how thick that is. All right, so my guesses tell me what we're having. Let's see if I'm right. No, it's, well, I mean, maybe, let's see. So we've got, oh, it's smooth. Germany, so shiny, I can't read it. Polychromos, Fiber Castell, uh, really cool dirt. Oh, it's earth green, yellowish. A very long name. It's so shiny you can't read it, but that's a really cool color. I like that color. I have been wanting one of these for so long. It's an erasable color pencil. I could not find these in Sweden. I am so excited. Uh, this one is Stedler Norris Erasable Red. Kind of looks like reddish orangish, but red. Uh, another one of the fancy polychromous pencils. It's so smooth feeling, and they're a little thicker feeling too. In brown, so green and brown, red to draw with. Uh, Posca, super fine. Uh, white, probably for like a gel pen kind of situation, so that's cool. And then. Another travel watercolor set. At this point, I've gotten two travel watercolor sets from uh, Scrawler Box. And there was another one I got, and I actually ended up giving it to a student um, because you only need so many travel watercolor sets. But I like this one because it's very slim, like fit in your pocket. Whereas, like my my normal watercolor set. Uh, is much bulkier uh, and the box doesn't like to hold together very well. But this is nice. It's very like low profile. So it's the, the Dale Rowney Aquafine watercolor travel set. 12 pans, one brush. And let's open this up. The hinge. <laughs> I showed you on my other one just a second ago. The hinge came undone. I don't think the hinge on this one will do that. But some of the pants will stick to the lid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright, and I guess this one has two little troughs on the side for water. And then the tiniest little travel brush. It's so small and adorable. This is a cute watercolor set. It's very small, very compact, very nice. Ooh, and the 
sticker. I think they're just gonna start doing themed stickers. This is a watercolor theme sticker. So nice. All right, let's actually look at the list here. Let's see. It's June, start of summer, and this month we want you to welcome the season with bright color washes. Use the supplies inside the box to add a little natural flourish to your artwork. Bring the outside in, or better yet, take these supplies outside and get some inspiration directly from the lush greens and looming, blooming color. Let's see, we have included a fine liner pen this month. Instead, try to use the color pencils to outline your work. Ooh. Green and brown outlines, that'll be interesting. So, Daily Rounding Aquafine Travel Set, retail 12 50 pounds. Faber Castell Polychromos Pencil, retails £1.95 each. The Stedler Erasable Pencil, retail. 15.59 pounds. Husca retail 320. Let's see. Lexington Prestige watercolor paper 300 GSM. 100% cotton. Ooh. And the theme is Summer Flourish. Mm. <laughs> Summer Flourish. What to do, what to do. Wow, guys, I cannot believe it. I have been doing Scrawler Box videos for over a year now. There was uh, a chunk in the middle where I had trouble creating uh, videos about it, but I have been doing the art since the beginning. My first Scrawler Box was in February of 2018. And now I'm back to June. It's exciting, even though I missed like six months of scrawler boxes. Anyway, uh, this box was a lot of fun. I've been trying to figure out what I wanted to talk about during this video. I didn't necessarily want to sit down and talk about all the steps I took in this art piece because it's just a couple gestures with watercolor on them. I do want to take a moment and say this paper was amazing. I loved how thick it was and it really did not have any trouble taking water. I did not use a lot of water, but like I could have done multiple washes if I really wanted to. When I read Summer Flourish as the theme, it really kind of made me think of being a kid, summertime, and having nothing to do. I was a weird kid. I did not actually enjoy summertime very much. I liked being at school. Most of my friends I only ever saw at school. I was growing up in the, you know, 90s. I mean, I was born in 90s, so when I was a kid, you know, late 90s. And there weren't cell phones for texting. There wasn't instant messengers that much. I mean, we had AOL Instant Messenger and Neopets and Gaia Online. So really, I didn't like summer because I didn't really see my friends. I wasn't very good at phone calling them and trying to hang out with them and chasing them down and doing all of that. I hung out with friends more in middle school, but I don't specifically remember going out and having groups of friends in elementary school. Uh, one of my best friends at the time was actually my mom's boyfriend's daughter, who my mom dated her dad for like nine years. So she was practically a sister, and I remember with this uh, girl who was my sister at this point, I have a very vivid memory of having just watched some movie about little girls catching fairies and us going to the park next to my house and running around chasing it had to have been a dragonfly but dear god we were convinced that it was a fairy and we saw it and we tried to catch it 
And I remember very vividly, it was weird because it had really, really dark body and red. So when we talked about it, it had really dark skin and then like fiery red hair. And you know, we had just watched a fairy movie, so obviously we would immediately find a fairy when we walked outside. My relationship with fairies is a little amusing. As a kid, I was really interested in, in fairies and things like that because, you know, little girls. My mom had these uh, pressed fairy books. My mom had these pressed fairy books, uh, Lady Cottington's pressed fairy books. And I was fascinated by them. I loved the anatomy of it. I loved that they were like fantasy. And I was amused by their booties. The fairies, most of the time, were naked. And I remember just being taken by this as a little girl because, I mean, nudity, oh my gosh. And, and it kind of made them less human in a way. And there really was something grotesque about it because they were most of the time human figures that were dead and smashed into a book. So you did have uh, a grossness there. But it kind of cements an idea in me that fairies didn't wear clothes. Similarly, back in the days of Hot Topic, you had, um, oh, what were they called? Amy Brown fairies? Let me see. Yeah, Amy Brown fairies. So it was another type of fairy, and they had these really long stockings with uh, stripes on them usually, and I love those fairies too. Again, magic fairies and still some nudity. I had a messenger bag that I took with me everywhere in middle school that had a, a fairy on it, and I had the Amy Brown stationery, and I had Amy Brown shirt, and I had this Amy Brown messenger bag. And, and one thing, at my middle school, we weren't allowed to have backpacks. We were supposed to use our lockers. But being a girl, I got away with the whole messenger bag as a purse thing. My messenger bag, which was an Amy Brown fairy, I think it was like the bubble fairy or something like that. She was naked. And I never got caught with my naked fairy bag. And it amused the heck out of me because I was so edgy because I had a bag with a naked fairy on it. I mean, her arm and her leg covered everything. You couldn't see anything except some side boob. But, ooh, I had a naked fairy bag. I bring this up because <laughs> for the Scrawler Box, I decided to draw some naked flower people. As a kid, you find nudity taboo and hilarious at the same time. Like you're fascinated by it, but also like you don't want to get in trouble for looking at booties. And through fairies, I was able to get away with that. My mom was weirdly okay with fairy nudity. And uh, I was never really, I was never really faced with as much nudity as I was exposed to with fairies until I entered university and I did a life drawing class where you draw a person naked. I think because of the fairies, my favorite spot to draw, and this has nothing sexual about anything, it's just a really interesting shape, was to draw the butts first. And there's just something about how the hips joints connect to the thigh joints and how the muscles and the fat rest around those areas, but also I am a large child, and butts still make me laugh to this day. So, thinking about that, I decided to draw butts and vague nudity uh, with these little flower fairy people. I did some gestures, I looked at some dancers, and the, the gestures that I took were... The, like like squats and, and kind of just amusing poses. Um, jumping and squatting and, and kind of poses you don't imagine people taking in the nude. I mean, there's so much sexualization of nudity in America 
when you think of a naked person, you think of either somebody only in the bath or somebody doing something like a, a Victoria's Secret ad. You don't think of people prancing and jumping around and dancing around completely in the nude. That's just uncouth. <laughs> and moving to another country, I realized that's a very American thing. The, the taboo behind nudity. I mean, you still want to avoid anything pornographic, but I mean, I see paintings of butts hanging in windows of shops. And, I mean, there, there's a whole idea of a tasteful nude that's much more accepted here. I mean, in Sweden, people skinny dip. I mean, I think it's more popular in, like, Norway or something, but people are always swimming in the nude. Like, there's, there's no stress, there's no gasp. Look away. Um... I'm not even sure what I'm talking about, but the point is, butts are funny. Because that's what cartoons and fairies told me as a child. So please enjoy these fairy butts and my nonsensical booty story. <laughs> I hope you guys were vaguely amused today by my fairy butt story. I hope you enjoyed my art, and uh, I hope you guys have a, you know, nice summer. Enjoy it. Spend it well. Chase some fairies. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to like and subscribe, and comment below about any of the stupid childish things you did or any things that you thought was rebelling when you were a kid and you realized now was entirely idiotic because no one frickin' cared about naked fairies on a messenger bag. Okay, bye guys. <laughs>